praying and making New Year's wishes at a Buddhist temple. That's how many Chinese start the Lunar New Year. Going to a temple is an old Chinese custom. People prayed for good fortune or good health, and it wasn't necessarily a religious activity. During the Cultural Revolution, it was seen as a taboo, so people stopped doing it, along with many other Chinese traditions. The tradition saw a revival after China's reform in the 1980s, and it continues today. But today's China is different. It's enjoying prosperity like never before. So the question is, can an ancient Chinese tradition and core values survive the new culture of materialism? What beliefs or values drive today's China? Has China's spectacular economic development upended China's traditional beliefs and values? When individual initiative is prized by the market economy and success is measured by money, what happens to morality? Let's get closer to China by exploring Chinese beliefs and values. Chinese 整个的老百姓要有信仰，要有信念，要有诚信。他说这三个东西最重要。后来他的学生就说：“这三个东西一定要拿掉一个，只能剩两个。”你看拿掉哪个呢？那就去兵嘛，不要不要国防了嘛。
，那么对子孙会造成什么影响？顾不上啊，所以他不会自觉的去服从长远的利益，自觉的去服从生态的需要。所以搞市场经济绝不是要搞市场社会，但是这个社会呢，一定是在发达的市场经济基础上，它才能够更好的前进。他也不能回到古代，那这样大家都不赚钱嘛，大家都去守贫嘛，只有贫困思想才好嘛，只有贫困品德才好嘛，那也不行呐。我们吃过这个亏啊，穷病穷病都是穷出来的病，太穷了就生病。但是问题市场经济上，我们富起来了以后，我们不是也在生病吗？怎么富起来也会生病呢？有了钱了以后就什么都来啊。所以这个界限要清楚，有边界的，市场经济和市场社会，绝不是要搞市场社会。In June 2013, flowers were set up all around the western city of Lanzhou for an upcoming international marathon. But just before the competition started, more than 10,000 pots of flowers were taken by passersby. In January 2014, 20 tons of apples fell out of an overturned truck. Along a highway in the central Chinese province of Hunan, instead of helping, nearby villagers looted the 70,000 yuan's worth of cargo and deprived the driver of a whole year's income. According to statistics published on the website of the influential Guangming newspaper, since March 2013, there have been 26 looting incidents in China. Such incidents have brought widespread media attention. 哄抢这种行为的背后，有个人私德的问题，有大家都在拿啊，不拿白不拿，那白拿谁不拿？拿了也白拿啊，这种从众的心理。People are asking one question: What's happening to Chinese society? 我们感到啊，怎么搞的呢？我这个年龄，在我年轻的时候，好像社会很讲诚信啊。很讲道德啊，尽管我们那时候很穷嘛。现在怎么富起来了？还搞得到处都有骗子呢？食品作假，什么作假的多了，我们就不能不问我们的诚信到哪里去了？我们的信仰好像出现混乱了。The food industry in China has indeed been hit by scandal. In 2008, tainted milk powder, which was fed to babies across the country, caused a mass controversy. And in 2011, there was a huge scandal over the widespread practice of illegally recycling old oil and using it in restaurants. Food safety has long been a top concern for China. By the end of March 2013, the State Administration of Industry and Commerce investigated and dealt with about 520,000 food safety cases. In China, food hygiene law was issued in 1995 to establish general food safety principles. The State Food and Drug Administration of China was founded in 2003 as part of China's efforts to improve food safety. In 2009, the Chinese National People's Congress passed the first comprehensive food safety law. The latest amended food safety law was submitted for public review through a website in June 2014. 要讲法治嘛，在这个同时，另外一方面克服。大家逐利的趋向，一切向前看的趋向，那么把这种信仰、诚信在市场经济里建立起来，这样人人都富起来了，人人都有很有道德。所以中国呢，我们正在探索这个路子。用我们的话来说，就是我们要找到我们的核心价值观。Next, what does Chinese culture mean for 21st century China? What are China's core values today?
Culture Express. See the world in color. From emerging powers to expanding partnerships, from fighting poverty to combating climate change, booming economies, war-ravaged nations, and everything in between. We capture the changes affecting the most dynamic and diverse continent on the planet, taking you beyond the headlines to the people and their stories. Asia Today, delivering Asia to the world. In 2012, the 18th Party Congress came up with the details of a socialist core values system. Values like patriotism, dedication, integrity, and friendship aimed at individuals. Other values include prosperity, democracy, civility, and harmony at the national level, and freedom, equality, justice, and the rule of law at the social level. President Xi Jinping has repeatedly encouraged people to follow these core values. On Children's Day in 2014, he visited a primary school in Beijing and urged teachers to cultivate these core values in their students. <laughs> Professor Wang Yiwei believes the socialist core values system is proposed in cooperation with a path that China has chosen for itself. It's an effort to strike a balance between fast economic development and a loss of values. Since the opening up and reform policy, traditional Chinese values have been thrown away, but new modern values have not been established. We only got halfway through in learning from the West. People think freedom is about individual freedom, but true freedom should be based on being responsible for oneself and for others. But a good value system is useless if it remains on paper. Wang Yiwei believes it needs to be reinforced with the rule of law. Why are there so many violations of the law right now? Because the cost is too low. People take small advantages and hope maybe they will not get caught. It's all because we have a legal system that's not sound enough. Honest people may end in a bad situation. For example, a senior citizen falls, but no one dares to help. Some cases make people believe that if a person provides help, he may be falsely accused of being the perpetrator. His kind deeds may result in delays at work and even a penalty. As a result, people think the less trouble, the better. Laws and regulations relevant to core values should be set to ensure followers get the credit and even some benefits, while lawbreakers get punished instead of getting away without being held responsible. I think this will make sure socialist core values become a code of conduct. Therefore, we have to make relevant laws and regulations. Actually, we've already made many achievements, like legislation to fight against the production of toxic baby formula, fake and forged products, and cheating. Tao 不和谐的声音很多 principles that you believe are critical for modern civilization in general, but Chinese civilization in particular, what are they?
，老百姓很生气啊，说现在什么都是假的，只有骗子才是真的，这怎么得了呢？诚信到哪里去了呢？第一种当然要法治，就是要靠法规，就是要靠法律来制约权利。不受制约的权利肯定要腐败，绝对不受制约的权利会绝对腐败。制约、法治，第二条叫规制，建立一定的规矩，是我们正在搞诚信的规划建设。In June 2013, Shanghai began recording fare dodgers in the subway as part of a new individual credit ranking system. One year later, China released an outline to measure the standing of individuals and government agencies. For individuals, it proposed an assessment of their legal background, tax payments, and overall credibility. For government agencies, it proposed setting up a credibility rating system. The government pledged to establish a set of laws and regulations that would also implement a reward and punishment mechanism by 2020. According to the outline, even the government will be held liable if there's a credit issue. 就是说，将来有一天能不能是这么一个理想？每一个公民都有身份证嘛，身份证都有号码的嘛，一输进电脑里就能看出来，你过去骗了没有？一个企业也有代码，只要一进电脑就知道这个企业是不是诚信的。如果是信誉不良、寸步难行，失信是有记录的，失信的成本是很高的。靠制度、规制，第三靠德治，第四呢叫心智，还是要综合治疗。你政府你的依法办事，你这个国家要非常文明，法治非常清楚，市场经济非常健全，市场监督非常有效，等等等等，这是一个综合的东西。最后第五种治疗呢，就是长效治疗。我们怎么去激活它？怎么把它变成一种抗体？怎么把它变成一种免疫机能？把它变成社会主义的核心价值观。所以最后的希望在于，这个社会主义的核心价值观立足于传统文化。Next, a Chinese insider talks religion. It doesn't happen often. That's closer to China. Uncovering the truth. We are on our way to Liaodong, one of the most dangerous districts in the city of Karachi. We were told that we're just about to cross the border between Malaysia and the Philippines. Going the distance to get the story. We meet the real people with real hope. For many young Thais, Muay Thai is one of the only ways to lift their families out of poverty. Behind every corner is a great story. Assignment Asia. Expect the unexpected. I am often asked, do the Chinese people have beliefs? What's the relationship between the Communist Party China's ruling party and religion. There is no better person to answer these sensitive questions than Ye Xiaowen, a sociologist by training and the former director of the State Administration of Religious Affairs. You were director of the State Administration of Religious Affairs. For this period of time, how did religion change in Chinese society? And equally important. How did the attitude of China's leaders change towards religion? I was a religious director for about 15 years, mainly focused on two things. One thing is that we are very clear that the basic principles of our religious work is that we must have a clear and accurate understanding of our religious beliefs. The second is that we must have a law. 对宗教事务进行管理。第三，从中国的国情出发，要坚持中国宗教事业呀、啊，由中国的宗教界来独立自主的兴办。第四呢
，要积极引导宗教，也就是社会主义社会相适应，在这个基础上，进一步发挥宗教啊、宗教界人士和新教群众在经济社会发展中的积极作用。第二呢，我不是宗教事务局吗？怎么去依法管理呢？我们是管宗教社会团体产生的宗教事务。于是我们制定了法规，有序的、依法的管理。这个管理包括保障宗教信仰自由、保护宗教界的合法权益，也包括规范他们的行为。不能是因为信了神，你就可以乱来啊！甚至制止那种打着宗教旗号的宗教极端主义，他不打着宗教旗号吗？ In 1982, after the Cultural Revolution, the People's Republic of China issued Document 19, which restored its policy to protect religious freedoms. In 2004, it implemented the first comprehensive religious legislation in China. It was Ye Xiaowen's job to see these policies were properly implemented. How did you answer the critics, uh, particularly in the West, that said, how could you as an atheist be the minister of religion? 你这个问题使我想起一段往事。我第一次到美国，在洛杉矶入海关的时候，那移民局官员就找我谈谈呢，不让我入关呢。他说：“你到美国来干什么？你是干什么的？”我说：“我是中国的宗教局长啊，宗教局长。美国就没有这个机构吗？你是不是假的？”哎。我说美国没有，中国有啊，这不一样吗？你比如，你们美国那么多教堂，对不对？你到教堂里你去看看，是空的吗？看不见一个神像吗？呃，很少看得到吗？偶尔看到圣母玛利亚。你到中国的佛教的寺庙里进去看，哦哟，一进去就是个弥勒佛坐在那边欢迎你啊。两边站着四大天王啊，而且一进去那个弥勒佛的后面站着一个菩萨，叫威陀菩萨。他是干什么的？他就是负责维持那些庙里的秩序的。他就是古代的宗教局长，我就是当代的威陀菩萨。他说：“哈哈，你是菩萨，你信佛教吗？”哎呀。我说我是共产党员，我不信教。哎呀，就你这个问题啊！你不信教，你怎么来管宗教？你叫我信哪个教？你当然希望我信基督教，回去佛教徒不高兴嘛。佛教徒希望我信了佛教，伊斯兰教也不高兴嘛。我正因为哪个教我都不信，哪个教我都尊重，我才能为你们服务嘛。他说：“你这这想半年，你究竟是干什么的？你？”我究竟干什么？当时我们正在落实政策嘛，我每天帮助基督教恢复一个教堂，我就是干这个的嘛。他说：“哈哈，美国欢迎你，啪盖章进来吧。”我才进去了。According to official statistics, there are now about 16 million Christians in China, compared to 700,000 Christians when the People's Republic of China was founded. The greater religious freedom in the 1980s encouraged me into the congregation. By the end of 2011, more than 58 million copies of the Bible were printed and published. What's more, publishers enjoy tax-exempt status. China also makes special efforts to protect the religious freedom of ethnic minorities and preserve their cultural heritage. China still provides special services to Muslims so their freedom to pursue their religion and traditions can be protected. Regulations have been made in the production of halal food and in the opening of Muslim cemeteries. In the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region alone, there are more than 24,000 mosques and 29,000 members of the religious clergy. Tariq is a Jordanian Muslim who came to Iwu in Zhejiang province as a student, but later fell in love with a Chinese Muslim woman. 
I hadn't thought of marrying a Chinese girl, but then I met her and found she was a devout Muslim. I was delighted I could find a Chinese girl I could marry, so I married her and settled here in China. Tariq eventually started a business here and employs Muslim and non-Muslim people at his company. Part of what attracted him to Iwu were not just the business opportunities, but that he found a home away from home in a place that embraces the Muslim faith, in this case, with Chinese characteristics. One of the great innovations in modernizing the Communist Party under former President Jiang Zemin was to allow entrepreneurs, the owners of the means of production, to join the Chinese Communist Party. Why is it the case that people who believe in religions or believe in God still cannot be members of the party? Ku 而我们不能把那些搞精英的、搞官吏的、掌握资本的人都看为剥削者、看为资本家它是唯一无能的基础现在同样来一起来建设社会法会积极作用信上帝也好，信真主也好，是要建设未来的天堂。这两个真的有什么关系呢？不都要建天堂吗？那走到一起嘛，一起建天堂嘛。这个这个区别不重要。我这么看这个问题，很复杂，但是我就这么粗浅